How much evidence do you need? Is this still one of the most compelling UFO cases of all time? What about multiple eyewitnesses, multiple pilots, a TV news crew, plane radar and multiple ATC radars tracking unidentified objects over multiple nights? Welcome to Lime Tangent, where we take a look at strange, interesting and maybe forgotten stuff, aiming to give you bite-sized pieces of something new or different to think about. So without any further stuffing around, let's dive into today's episode. UFO sightings are in the news again, with more releases from the US military of drone-like craft around Navy ships, and that got me thinking about some of the more interesting and credible historical sightings and the associated investigations. And I must admit, I'm often surprised with how official investigations will stop at nothing to try and dismiss the sighting as anything but an unidentified flying object. You don't need to say it's aliens, just agree that it's an object that is flying that has not been identified. And I think this historical encounter is really interesting, even now. Now, I'm not saying it's aliens. I just think this meets the definition of an unidentified flying object pretty well. So why? Well, here we go. The event we're talking about occurred in New Zealand in December 1978, and it's known as the Kaikoura Lights. And this 40-year-old mystery continues to intrigue. The series of sightings occurred over the Kaikoura mountain range near the top of New Zealand's South Island. It was just before midnight on December 20, 1978, at Blenheim on the top of the South Island of New Zealand, the base of air freight company Safe Air Limited. Warrant Officer Ian Ufendal was on duty patrolling the airstrip. He began to see a number of bright lights towards the southeast. At first they looked like plane landing lights, however they didn't appear to be getting any closer. After checking with the tower, it was confirmed that no arrivals were expected from that direction. The lights now appeared to be hovering in one place. There were three lights altogether, a large bright one and two dimmer ones. Blenheim Control called Wellington Control to ask what they could see in the area. And this is where the story starts to get interesting. John Cordy at Wellington Control confirmed that they were picking up returns in the same area. So now we have dual radars and an eyewitness confirming something is there. Also, around this time, the local police at Blenheim were receiving reports from people of strange lights towards the Kaikoura coast. Phone contact between Blenheim and Wellington radar was maintained, along with local visual observations, with all three sources agreeing on the location and behaviour of the objects. In the early hours of December 21, a safe air Argosy cargo plane took off from Blenheim on a routine flight from Blenheim to Christchurch, Piloted by Vern Powell and Ian Pyrie, Wellington ACT had asked them to keep a lookout for anything strange. The crew soon reported seeing a bunch of strange lights tracking the aircraft for several minutes and then disappearing and reappearing in another location. The pilots described the UFO as being very large with five white flashing lights on it. The pilots described some of the lights to be the size of a house and others to be small but flashing brightly. Now the interesting thing here is that the objects were also tracked on both ATC radar and the plane's radar at the same time. In one encounter, an object appeared to close in on the Argosy, halting it around 30 miles out and at the 10 o'clock position. Captain Powell confirmed he could see a bright glowing white light tinged with red in exactly the position described by Wellington Control. It's also worth noting right here that subsequent checks with the New Zealand military confirmed that there were no exercises taking place in the area at the time. Shipping information later also confirmed no large Russian or other shipping vessels were in the area at the time. And it was also confirmed that the Argosy was the only plane flying in the area at the time. Later, on December 30, picking up on the story following interest in other recent UFO events in Australia, Quentin Fogarty, a TV journalist from Channel 10 in Australia, on holiday in New Zealand with his family at the time, was asked by Channel 10 to investigate. He hired a local camera operator and sound recordist and arranged to join a flight for a newspaper run aboard Safe Air's Argosy plane between Wellington and Christchurch to be piloted by Captain Bill Startup and co-pilot Robert Gard. Captain Startup had 23 years flying experience and 14,000 hours, with Guard having 7,000 hours. 
the crew reported excellent weather conditions, clear with visibility over 30 nautical miles. The film crew intended to film interviews with the crew about the sightings during the flight. However, they got a lot more than just interviews. For several minutes at a time on the flight to Christchurch, strange and unidentified lights were observed by the five people on the flight deck. They were also tracked by Wellington air traffic controllers and of course filmed in colour by the television crew on the plane. They began as very bright orangish reddish specks of light that turned into great big globes of light. They were clearly airborne somewhere between the plane and the Kaikoura coast. At times the crew could see the light shining down onto the ocean. One object was reported to have tracked the aircraft until landing, confirmed by ground radar and the airplane crew. The crew said at the time that this was an eerie feeling, knowing that you were being followed by something completely unknown. Once the plane had landed at Christchurch, the film crew located more film and reboarded the plane for the next flight. Three minutes after takeoff, at about 2,000 feet, it encountered a gigantic lighted orb which fell into formation off the wingtip. Air traffic control in Christchurch confirmed that they had company. The plane radar showed a target in the same direction, about 18 nautical miles out. The target followed along with the cargo aircraft for about 15 minutes, all while being filmed, watched, tracked on aircraft radar, ground radar, and described on an audio recording made by the TV crew. Captain Startup later commented, It turned with us as I changed course. It was making definitive movements in relation to us. Fogarty would later be heard saying on camera, Let's hope they're friendly. The light was filmed for several minutes as it travelled beside the plane. When they turned towards it, the light seemed to react by moving away from the aeroplane. The experience itself was extraordinary, Fogarty says. One of the most famous images to come from the flight is the figure 8 shown here that was captured on one frame of film. The incidents attracted huge publicity in New Zealand at the time, and the authorities were caught flat-footed, with one Air Force commander admitting that he had not been advised of the potential incursion into NZ airspace until he arrived at work the next day. Seemingly wanting to make up for being seen as asleep at the wheel, the Air Force promised to put a jet on standby to investigate further sightings and began their own investigation. Authorities were quick to attribute the sightings to anything other than an unidentified flying object. The great range of theories put forward included squid fishing boats, reflections from vegetation, particularly cabbages apparently, and anomalous weather conditions. The Defence Force investigation at the time concluded that the sightings were unusual but natural phenomena, likely the transit of Venus, lights for squid fishing boats, or some other unusual atmospheric conditions or even radar returns from a field of cabbages. But the cabbages were beauties, according to one local resident. But even now, after more than 40 years, the pilots and passengers involved are adamant that it was something else. Many involved in the initial sightings weren't happy with the official investigation, going so far as to call it a farce and a whitewash. One of those was Wellington radar controller Mr Cordy, who was quoted as saying, come on, radar returns from a field of cabbages, squid boats doing 180 knots at 14,000 feet and as for Venus being the case Mr Cordy commented in true Kiwi style that he had yet to see Venus move around his radar screen at 120 knots stop and head off down the coast in pursuit of an aircraft. Another two people involved in the investigation who challenged the findings were Warrant Officer Ian Ufendale and Flight Service Officer Bill Frame. They had both watched the lights from the control tower at Blenheim on the night of the 22nd of December 1978. In a subsequent letter of 30 January 1979, Ufendel said the investigation was an insult to all those involved in the sighting and the subsequent investigation. It is my opinion that this inquiry was a farce from beginning to end. Others were also critical of the investigation, saying the investigators had the answers before they had even heard the evidence. And as I looked into this case a little more, the thing that struck me the most was the level of certainty of those involved, that they had witnessed something that was not just some ground-based lights or reflections, that there really was something up there following them. These people were experienced pilots who had flown the route many times. They would have seen Venus in the sky many times before, along with fishing boats and other things suggested to be the cause. Aliens, maybe not, but I think definitely something unidentified and unlikely 
to be the cabbages or other green vegetables. Others have conducted some more in-depth analysis of the reports and the viewing angles from the cockpit. I've linked them below if you'd like to investigate this further. Shortly after the sightings, a copy of the film was provided to Bruce McAvee, a renowned UFOologist and optical physicist who specialised in laser technology and worked for the US Navy in Maryland, Virginia. Bruce was also then flown to New Zealand and to Melbourne to interview witnesses. He concluded the event involved unknown objects or phenomena fitting the definition of UFOs. One would think that the conclusion that several of these sightings involved unidentified flying objects flying with impunity in New Zealand airspace would have been sufficient to start an even deeper study of UFOs, Maccabee said. Around the same time, the sightings also became the first film that the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena was prepared to endorse as showing a genuine unidentified flying object after a 20-year period investigating some 20,000 sightings. Quentin Fogarty, the TV journalist, also wrote a book detailing the encounters and the aftermath titled Let's Hope They're Friendly, link in the description. Quentin passed away in July of 2020 and always remained convinced that modern computer analysis of the original film might one day explain what they saw. Quentin continued to work on this project up till his death. And in December 2010, the New Zealand military released the previously top secret classified report on the incident under freedom of information laws. It concludes the same thing as the initial publicly released report. Nothing to see here, thank you. However, the official report is an interesting read, including the numerous letters from concerned citizens writing in to offer their information and theories, along with some of the internal government communications around the sightings and the investigation, linked below. Anyway, thanks for watching. And what do you think? Is this a good example of a real UFO sighting? Let us know what you think of some of the most credible sightings out there. And please don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more random videos like this. Thanks.